Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you to St. Andrews United Methodist Church, Virginia Beach. I'm Pastor Witt. Hope you've had a great week. Hope you have uh, spent time ministering in the name of God, not only to yours, but also to others. This is the beginning of a sermon series, a teaching series, uh, uh, a classroom series, where we're going to take a look at being a disciple of Jesus Christ, the ways of discipleship, formation strategies for living as a disciple of Jesus. Over the next few weeks, we're going to spend time doing that. Um, you know, Jesus said that the, the two greatest things, the two greatest commandments were to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, your neighbor as yourself, to love God, to love others. We're going to take a look at that. We're going to break those down so that we can understand clearly what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Thanks for your financial support. Thanks for your ministry support, all the things that you're doing in the name of Christ. If you would like to financially support us, uh, you have several ways that you can get funds to us. 717 Tucson Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23462. You can go online at saumcvb.org or you can bring it up and drop it up in the box. Or you can come to worship on Sunday mornings, either at 8.30 or 11, and bring it with you. Again, I hope you're doing well. A lot of our folks uh, are having a tough go right now, some in the hospital and such. We don't share that online, but if you'd like to contact the office, I'd be glad to share which ones we can with you so that you can pray for them. If you just simply mention the folks that are feeling poorly, I think God will know exactly what you're talking about. Let's take a couple moments to center ourselves on Jesus as we begin our worship. Let us pray. Amen. Let's go inside. join me in our call to worship. We are called into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be God's servants in the service of all, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join Christ in his passion and victory. Beloved, let us love one another, for love comes from God. All who love are born of God and know God. Come, let us join in worshiping God. Hear now our centering prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou will. Rank me with whom thou will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Hear now our prayer for illumination. O Lord, help us open ourselves to the hearing of the written word. May the message contained within be joined with your spirit and bring forth a living, experiential word for each of us. In your holy name, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 35b through 40. A lawyer asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall agape the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall agape your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, the written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How many of you have been on a team? So you know what a team is. A team is a group of people who work together to get something done. 
there are many different kinds of teams. There are sports teams like soccer and baseball and even ice skating. There are school teams like Destination Imagination, Battle for the Books. There are special interest groups like clubs, scouts, a chess club, a reading club, a garden club. And then there are musical groups like choir, band, orchestra. Teams are people working together to do certain things. Those of you who have been on a team or in a club know that teams usually have leaders. And a leader is someone who guides that team. They may make rules, plans, help to get resources, and keep the team moving towards their goal. Well, being on Jesus' team is called being a disciple of Jesus. A disciple is a follower of Jesus. Disciples of Jesus promise to let Jesus be the leader of the team. And when we say that we believe in Jesus and promise to follow him, we've become disciples of Jesus. Being a disciple means that we need to know and follow what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to help people to hear and realize that God loves them. He wants to help people understand that God wants them to join the team too. Like being a great ball player or a skater, it takes a long time to, to become a good disciple of Jesus, and we have a lot to learn. So over the next few weeks, we're going to take a look at how we can become better team members and disciples of Jesus. Each week, we are going to look at a different way to become a better team member. Let us pray. Jesus, we are excited to learn about your team and how to be better team members. Help us to be great disciples of you over the next few weeks. And thanks for calling us to join your team. Amen.
We're beginning a series, a sermon series, a lecture series, a teaching series entitled The Way of Discipleship, Christian Life Formation Strategy, a Christian Life Formation Strategy. We're going to be looking at this over the next couple of weeks, six weeks. You know, when I was a kid and was um, becoming a, a Christian, I don't think I quite understood really what being a Christian was. I knew that it was uh, something that all my buddies were doing, and therefore it was something that I wanted to be a part of. And I really do think that the Christian walk is something where day by day we learn more about what it is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I think that when we become a Christian, we become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not a disciple for Jesus, but a disciple of Jesus. I believe that a disciple of Christ is one who is actively working on becoming what Christ would be if Christ were walking in their shoes. I remember when I was a kid, there was a, there was a thing about in order to know what a person's life was and such, you had to walk a mile in their moccasins or something. Well, I think this is probably a really good way for us to take a look at being a disciple of Christ. That what we need to do is we need to surrender our lives over to allowing God to walk through us. Now, having said that, I want to be sure that you understand that I'm not saying that, that God removes our free will. I don't think that's the case. Some folks seem to, to talk about that when they talk about um, that God has a plan and that everything's worked out and on and on and on. If what they mean by that is that God knows what's going to happen, I'll buy that. But if what they mean by that is that God has control over what's happening, I reject it. John Wesley would reject it. We have free will, the ability to, to buy into this and step in closer or to thumb our beak at it and walk away. And I believe that being a disciple of Jesus Christ is learning to be what Christ would be if Christ were inside of our shoes. Now, I believe that when we are baptized, that the presence of God, the Spirit of God, resides inside of us with our presence. And, and those conversations that were taking place on the outside now begin to take place on the inside. And I think that this is a, this is a great thing because it gives us the ability to hear more clearly um, the thoughts of God as we're moving forward, as we're becoming what God wants us to become. The mission statement of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I want to be sure that we understand something. It is not to transform the world and hopefully make disciples of Jesus Christ in the process. It is the opposite. Our goal, our main goal, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You know, I've said this to you many times if you've been around me for teaching or preaching or funerals. I say that some of the last things that we say to people are oftentimes the most important things that we say to people. Matthew, as Matthew is, uh, as the Gospel of Matthew is being closed down, the author in the last chapter, the 28th, in verse 19 through 20 says, he has Jesus say, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. These are the last words some of the last words that the writer of the Gospel of Matthew says that Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ. This is why the United Methodist, our, our mission statement is to go into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You know, Jesus was once asked, in fact, just a few chapters before this, 22nd chapter of Matthew, Jesus was asked, um, some pretty heavy questions, and he shut down one group, and another group stepped up, and he shut them down. Finally, a lawyer stepped up. And in verse 35b of Matthew 22, 
A lawyer asked Jesus a question to test him. Not to find the answer, but to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all other law and prophets. Now I find that interesting. This past summer I began to really dig through and to try and and figure out where I felt we needed to go as we're trying to come through the end of a pandemic and, and all the things that have challenged us. And I said, you know, really what we need to do is we need to have a discussion about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I remember being in a meeting some years ago with the district superintendent and a bunch of other pastors. And we were talking about discipleship. And then DS was saying that this needed to be the center post of what we were doing. And I said to him, would you give us a, a real clear synopsis of what the district, the conference, the Methodist church means by discipleship? Because there's so much stuff. And he looked at me and he said, Jeff, he says, if you don't know what that is, you shouldn't be a pastor. And I, I looked back at him and I said, well, that answer is not very helpful. Because quite frankly, there's a lot of stuff and there are six or eight people in this room. And the six or eight people are going to have different answers as to what that means. And I would like to know what the church thinks that answer is. So that when I go back to my church, I can then pull together that answer and begin to teach and preach and eliminate all the other peripheral stuff out of the way. That has stuck with me for some time now, and I've done a great deal of study over the past years. And in fact, this summer I came to the conclusion that this is the area that we needed to begin to focus. We needed to begin to aim. And I said, all right, I, I want to see if I can come up with a cogent way of putting this inside of a a framework that I can share with you and with other pastors on what this means and how it is that we're to work this thing out so that, so that we can be better disciples of Jesus for the transformation of the world. I listened to Jesus, his words saying, hey, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your spirit and the neighbor as yourself. By the way, the word that he used there is not just love. The word that he uses there in the Greek, he's not saying make God a friend, eros God, make God a family member, storage. He's saying, listen, agape, agape God. Care for God even when in doing so, it costs you to do so. And then he says, and the second one is as big as the first one. Agape others. As much as you agape yourself. Agape others. He says, agape God, agape others. This became the framework. I talked with, I said, a lot of, a lot of pastors this summer. I, I talked with Andrew Ware. Joe Vonner, uh, Jason Stanley, Matt Potter, um, Chip Geisler, Tammy Eastop, Dave Drinker, Clark Conduff, and a bunch of others, and, and lots of laypersons about this. I mailed stuff out and had them mail things back in so that I could really get this thing boiled down to a real, real easy way to get a handle on it. And so all of you that want it will receive a copy of this document. The first page, the way to discipleship, Christian life formation strategy. It's busted into two separate sections, the love of God and the love of others. That, those, those greatest commandments that Jesus talks about. By the way, lest you think that Jesus made these things up, in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 10, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is alone or one. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Jesus is reaching back and pulling something out of his Old Testament stuff. Or if Jesus is the son of God and Jesus is God, Jesus is the one that shared it with them who wrote it down way back there. That's my thought that Jesus is sharing out of the vast knowledge some of what Jesus shared with them. And when they ask him, what do you think is the greatest commandment? They're asking God, what do you think the greatest commandment is, God? He says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. So I designed this thing to talk about the love of God. I said, okay, how do we love God? What kind of things do we do to show our love for God? I think we need a life of prayer. We need a life of worship. We need a life of study. These are just three that I came up with that I've built scriptures underneath and individual things underneath. Now, as I looked at this, I said, okay, life of prayer. There is a corporate aspect to our life of prayer, and there is an individual aspect of our life of prayer. And we need both a corporate and an individualistic understanding and a life of prayer. We need to be able to pray by ourselves. We need to be able to pray with others. And so this whole framework of love of God, life of, God, life of prayer under love of God, life of worship, life of study, and under love of others, life of service, a life of Christian relationships, and a life of offerings. All of these have individualistic and corporate aspects. This is where we're going to go over the next few weeks. We're going to see if we can't actually pick this thing up that we call ourselves United Methodists, that we want to go into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. If we're going to do this, I think that we need to actually take a look and see how it is that we can do this. And so this is what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. If you want a full copy of the document, it's about 10 or 12 pages long. It has books and references and all kinds of things. Each week in the bulletin, there will be more. We'll be sending out some pieces um, in, in the bulletin each week. And you should be receiving a newsletter, which has a copy of this in it. And over the next few weeks, if you want some more notes and things, um, I'd be glad to share those with you. Next week, I'll share with you a listing of books. I hope you're reading. I hope that you are seriously taking, um, taking seriously your, your moving forward as a disciple of Jesus, and in doing so, you're studying. I remember when I first went to the Outer Banks to go fishing for red drum in the fall. I didn't know anything about it. Um, I had to buy a pole. I had to buy equipment. I had to buy sinkers and hooks and this and that. And I bought books. And I sat down and I studied. I went online. I listened to professional guys. I figured out how to do it. My hope and prayer is that you're figuring out how to do this thing that we call discipleship of Jesus. Because after all, that's really what it's about. Jesus walked along and taught his disciples. Today we need to be taught. We need to work on it. Got a lot more to say to you over the next couple of weeks. As I said, we'll touch those six. May God bless you this week. May God richly begin to, to touch you spiritually and have you say, wow, I really need to step into this thing. Let us pray. Lord, be with us this week as we prepare our hearts and minds to take a look at what it means to be a disciple, what it means to, to walk the way of discipleship. Help us, Lord, to discover a Christian life formation strategy that can strengthen our way with you, strengthen our hope, love, joy, and peace that we exist in, and, and may it cause us to pour out over top the overflow of our relationship with you to others so that we may bring them into your family. Help us to do so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table, not ours, all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another, 
Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We've not loved our neighbors. We've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you join me in praying silently for our sins? Hear the good news, the gospel. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray a blessing on the offerings that we've received this week through the internet, through the mail, through our black box, and those that will be given on Sunday morning in person. Would you join me in praying a blessing on the tithes, offerings, and sacrifices? Amen. Would you join me in the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. you join me in our prayer of dedication generous god we give thanks for all that you have given us we return for mid an offering for the sake of spreading love as the body of christ open us lord to even better ways to steward your creation under our care help us to aid you and bring your kingdom to the world in the name of Christ Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, raised it, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup, a new cup, an additional cup. He raised it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, O Lord, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O Lord, and at home. And on these gifts of bread and wine here and at home. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, make this be a means of grace for us, that as we receive it, it's more than just bread. It's more than just cracker. It's, well, it's the mystery of your presence. Amen. Make this be more than just a cup grape juice, wine. Make this be for us a sign and a symbol of your sacrifice and a call for ours. Amen. Your elements are blessed. You may receive them. join in singing our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Yeah. 
empowered by the Spirit of God and be people of God who are living into their baptism. Who are leaning into this call over the next six weeks to, to take a look at what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Go and do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May God bless you and bless you deeply enough that you can pour it out and bless others. <laughs>